In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, to most glory forever. Amen. By God's grace, we want to offer a way of understanding the Bible, the very top layer or understanding by which we can start reading the Bible in a certain order to understand the mystery that God is revealing to us through the Holy Scriptures. As we know that our Lord Jesus Christ came to save us, this is the whole essence of the relationship between God and us. But let's take it in clear understanding very concisely, which will build upon how and what order and in what way we understand the Bible. In the very first beginning, an act of love is that God created us. And in Genesis 1.26, we're very special from any other creation. Let us create man in our image, in our likeness. We are in the image of God. We are in the likeness of God. We have dominion over all the creation that God has made, which was finished before our creation, over um, the six days of the creation where we are being created at the end to have dominion over it. And we're also living forever because we are in the image and the likeness of God. And God breathed in Adam a living, to be a living being. And that means eternal life, living eternally. In addition to this, we have been given access to God, interacting with him fully in the form of the tree of life, which is mentioned in Genesis 2, 9, that God brought out plants from the garden and then he says, the tree of life is in the midst of the garden. He warned us also to not to participate in what is evil. Um, he didn't have to explain to us what evil is, but to Adam and Eve, it was clear that evil is to disobey God and participate in eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Where did the evil that God is protecting Adam and Eve from is? It's the fall of Satan that is explained in uh, Isaiah 14 and in Ezekiel 28. Uh, in Isaiah 14, um, Isaiah is asking Lucifer, who is the uh, cherub, where have you fallen from? And in 13, he answers in five, I will, uh, which the cherub put in his mind to do, and they incorporate the pride of trying to be or wanting to be with insistence, I will be above the Most High. Hence, he fell, and this is the evil that God is, doesn't want Adam and Eve to participate of, lest they would surely die. It is important to mention that Adam and Eve were married by God because Eve came from Adam, and God brought him to her as described in chapter 2. In this full harmony, there is nothing to perturb it till the devil, who is a fallen cherub by pride, and that is the evil, converts, convinces Eve to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil by deceiving her. And this is in Genesis chapter 3. Because of her eating and giving to Adam, death came into their nature. Corruption became part of their nature, or their nature became corrupted, and it's manifested by they found themselves naked, whereas when they were created, the Bible tells us they were both naked and not ashamed, which means the pure nature of the creation. After the fall, the corruption of that nature is manifested by stating that the senses have been corrupted and they found themselves naked and they got ashamed and they had to cover themselves. This led the disciplinary action of God that has to be done so that evil would not continue forever. And this is explained in Genesis 3.22. Man became one of us knowing good and evil, lest he, falls, lest he extends his hand to the tree of life. Therefore, God put Adam and Eve out of the garden away from the tree of life and protected the path to the tree of life with cherub with fiery swords turning here and there. And this is the core 
problem that needs to be solved, death came into the world. Adam and Eve became corrupted after being in the, in the image of God and his likeness and in, a, in, in full dominion and living forever and having access to God as being able to access the tree of life. Their fall and, their fall and death becoming um, their end uh, led to God putting them away, separating them from accessing the tree of life. This is a key statement. Adam and Eve are no longer able to access the tree of life. Again, Adam and Eve, because death came into them and because their nature is corrupted, which is, was not their form when they were created, but it became their, their nature because they have participated in evil, they were prevented from accessing the tree of life. That is the problem. The key problem is that Adam and Eve are no longer able to access the tree of life or access God or have the relationship they had with God in full communion between them as it manifested by being able to have access before from the tree of life and now they are prevented from it. I am stressing this very clearly. So the solution to this which holds the whole Bible together is God himself comes in a human form where his divinity is united with his humanity with no mingling, no confusion, no alteration. He is God in the flesh, fully God, fully human, one compound nature of the incarnate God, the Logos. And he gives us the access again to him in the communion. So the communion is the solution to the separation. The one who eats my body and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. Abides in me and I in him. Abides in me and I in him. The full unity between God and man. Of course, there is a preparation for man before able to have access to the communion. But the goal that God solved by which that we don't, we're not able to access him again is him giving us himself in communion. And in fact, in Bright Saturday fraction, we say that you have given us back the tree of life that is your body and your blood in the fraction itself. Okay, in order to have communion, we have to be prepared for this. And this is being baptized, buried with Christ, and resurrected with him, Colossians 2.12 and Romans 6.4. Us ourselves are a house of God, a temple of God, so God can come and enter us. And we are, our worship to him culminates into him living in us and us in him, and that's the Eucharist. So baptism is buried and resurrected with Christ. Um, being the house of God is the chrismation, having the Holy Spirit living in us, the sacrament of Meirun. And this allows us to have communion, which fulfills the solution, which brings us back to what we were in paradise. This solution continues also in heaven, because in heaven will not be separated from God. In the book of Revelation, it shows this by calling access to God in heaven, as eating from the tree of life, as we read this in Revelation 2, 7, to him that overcomes, will I give to eat of the tree of life, eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. And he showed me a pure river in Revelation 22, verses 1 and 2, and he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb in the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. This is showing us full access to God again in the kingdom of heaven. And how is it shown? It's shown by being accessing the tree of life. So the tree of life before the fall is access to God. The solution to the fall is God giving us communion, the Eucharist. Therefore, the worship in the New Testament has to end with the Eucharist. We cannot just worship by singing and a sermon and leave. We have to have the real body and blood of Christ, uh, as mentioned in St. John chapter 6, verses 53, 54, and 55. And it supports this more when God revealed um, the, the, the 
house of God permanently with the chosen, with the elect, with those who fulfill his will. In the book of Revelation, he showed it also that they have access to the tree of life. Uh, a final note is that as God has done this, now we can understand how to approach the Old Testament because we will understand the new first and then through the new, we'll go and see the old because the old is doing the same preparation in the form of symbols and typology. So this is the, the fall is sold by the Eucharist. In the Old Testament, God is preparing the mind of a man to see how he's preparing by typology this solution, having a congregation that is by baptism, having a house that is the temple of the Holy Spirit, our body, and of course the church is the house of Christ, is the body of Christ, and having the rituals that at the end in the New Testament, it ends with having um, the Eucharist. In the Old Testament, he's preparing the same skeleton in order to prepare the minds, this is the, how the solution will look like in the New Testament. So in the Old Testament, he's forming a congregation. He does it by circumcision. He's forming a house, and that is the tabernacle, as is detailed in Exodus, and later, later becomes the temple in First Kings by Solomon. And forming detailed rituals in Genesis in its primitive form, and then gets very detailed in the book of Exodus and Leviticus. And this is the shadow of the solution. The Old Testament is better to be read and studied and understood after we read the new, and then we go and look at the old through the new. But these are the three pivots that we're going to understand through it. The goal is communion. Before it, we have baptism and chrismation. And the preparation for this, the, the, the rituals are being accessed in the house of God and by a congregation of God. So congregation, location, and rituals. Old Testament, circumcision, tabernacle, and the rituals explained in the Old Testament. New Testament, it's baptism, chrismation, and the crown of the whole plan is the Eucharist where God abides in us and us in him. Glory be to God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. We're going to continue later on in detailing how to read the Bible, the sequence of reading the chapters in the Bible, but this is the core top level that holds the plan altogether.